Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Thanks for coming by today. Uh, just thought I'd do a little kind of mid-month kind of check-in on what I've been getting up to so far here in May. Because yeah, it's already about, half <laughs> about halfway over, right? Whew, it is the time. Where does it go? Anyway, I've been reading, I've been watching some stuff, I'm doing some things. So let's talk about it. Let's start with books. Uh, what I've been reading so far. I will say I've mostly been kind of participating in Zombiethon has been kind of my focus, reading zombie books and stories and stuff like that. I'm having a really great time with that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the bulk of my reading, but you know, we got other things going on. So particularly the first book that I read this month, <laughs> uh, which is Shanghai Girls by Lisa C. I uh, read this is, of course, our book club pick for the Death by TBR book club that I co-host with Kelly from Kelly Hooked on Books. I'll link her channel below. I'll link our Discord, the Discord below where we have a little, she's got a little section there on her Discord for the Death by TBR. Um, so come and join us. We're reading just a really kind of mix of different books so far and, and I've been enjoying them. So Shanghai Girls is a historical fiction novel that we, uh, that we picked for this month and um, I've been wanting to read Lisa C for a while. I've got I've had, you know, had a few of her books on my shelves and stuff like that. So I'm really, I'm glad that we picked this one to start with. Uh, I did really enjoy it. It is um, essentially a family drama, um, but um, focusing on these two sisters. So we start off in Shanghai. Again, there's these two sisters. They are uh, kind of from a more of a well-off sort of family. Um, you know, so they have like nice homes and they have, you know, like, people that, you know, um, like staff that help their home, you know, stuff, they, they're well off, you know, in comparison to a, a lot of other people in the area, I guess. And I will say the timeline of this, I would say, was early 1900s, I believe. Um, <clears throat> give, or, give or take, you know, teens, 20s, maybe. Um, I forget exactly. Anyway, uh, so um, what we learned, though, is their father is has racked up a pretty enormous amount of gambling debts and uh, through decisions that he has made the sisters were basically kind of married off <laughs> to these to these you know these this man's two sons and God, the idea of the story goes from there. Now, during kind of all this is happening is this sort of upheaval with um, the Japanese coming into the Shanghai and, you know, a lot of violence is, is occurring and things like that. So uh, stuff is going on. And so they're, they're kind of forced to flee Shanghai, um, not necessarily because they're wanting to marry these guys, but because they're, yeah, they just have to for their own safety. And um, so they end up going to America, which is where these two men live um, and then I so said this is kind of where our story picks you know as we moved through the US and what that means for them in this new life of course they're in a totally different country and um, and what life is like for them there um, they live in they're living in basically the LA area the Hollywood area you know the younger sister kind of gets wrapped up in the Hollywood lifestyle of um, like she starts kind of working for a studio and bringing in like Asian people to work in, um, in the movies as like, you know, uh, background folks, um, you know, stuff like that. Walk-in roles, that kind of thing like that. And she gets really, you know, caught up in that life. The older sister is caught up in this life of um, being the sort of more, you know, sort of subservient wife role and uh, staying in the house and working the job at the restaurant that her father-in-law owns. and all this kind of thing that are, that's in Chinatown, essentially. We see the sort of uh, the start and build up of Chinatown itself uh, in the area and how all that came about, which was really interesting. And again, I, at the course, at the heart of this is a family drama and the things that they just have had to deal with along the way, which are some really tough things, uh, really hard <laughs> things that they've had to deal with. And it goes through, you know, several, you know, decades of their life. and. Uh, the oldest daughter is, you know, has a baby and is raising the baby. We see, you know, that child grow up and as she's growing up, of course, as an American, you know, living in California um, and her ideals as they form along the way. It's just a really great family story um, that is pretty sad along the way. <laughs> um, you know, there's some good things, but, you know, it is, there's some hard things along the way, too. Um, 
if you like that kind of story, I think that you will like Shanghai Girls very much. I, I really loved the characters. They were very complex, uh, but also very realistic and nuanced as well. I loved the setting of, you know, seeing their life in Shanghai and then, you know, how, you know, where they were living kind of high and mighty a little bit and then, you know, coming to America. <clears> the <throat> course, this, this sort of, this immigrant story of, coming to America for a, the better life, but you know, maybe it's not so, maybe it's not so easy, right? Um, and, and yeah, just again, just the sort of story of, of, a, you know, of this family, which I'm sure echoed the story of many, you know, immigrant, Chinese immigrant families around that time period. Um, so yeah, I over, I really enjoyed it. Um, there are some really, there are, uh, the one tough scene in particular involving, um, sexual assault that I just want to warn you about. It was really, it was really, really tough to read. Um, so just know that that's there. It's in more, the first sort of section of the book. Um, it was, it was a tough read, but, um, but yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was great. And very glad to have read it. There is a book, sort of a book two for this that follows, uh, you know, picks up the story where it left off of book one. I think I'll get to it at some point. I'm not in a super big rush to get to it, but I am curious to know kind of what happens to these characters, you know, um, as we're following, um, uh, I think this one more follows the, the daughter um, and kind of the decisions that she has made at the end of the book. So, uh, so I'm, I'm very curious and I'll get to it at some point, I think, yeah. It was good. I really enjoyed it. If you like historical fiction, if you like um, family focused stories where, um, you know, the drama of the family is played out, um, I think you'll like it. I really liked it. Okay. That was it. So, <laughs> and then let's see, what have I got next? I've read a couple of little kids books for zombie fun, which has been fun. One has been this like SpongeBob SquarePants books called Attack of the Zombies. It was a silly little book where Gary starts off the, the zombie apocalypse with some kind of snail virus. Yeah, it was pretty cute and fun. Uh, I read a Scooby-Doo book. Um, I forget what the title was. I didn't write it on the list, but super fun. I read this like ABC of a spooky monsters book. <laughs> Z is for zombies. That was cute too. I got all those through my Libby app. Just really cute stuff. <laughs> so, you know, one of the prompts for Zombiethon is to read, you know, picture books and children's books. So, so that was fun. Um, what else? I did read the short story, A Bed by Elizabeth Massey. Um, this, <laughs> this I also got through Libby, uh, um, by the way. Uh, this, <laughs> this is a hell of a story. It is very dark and disturbing. I will say caveat, please. Um, oof. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So we're following this young girl who has been who, you know, she's married and stuff, but she lives with her mother-in-law. The zombie apocalypse has happened. Her mother-in-law is keeping her sort of uh, basically trapped in her room, like, keeps her locked in there um, for reasons. I don't even want to, I don't want to say. So, um, I, <laughs> it was a damn good story. It's a damn good story. It is disturbing. Okay. I just want to say that right now. So this may want, of course, me saying that some people will flock right to read it because they're like that and some people it will turn some people off I just think if you want to try to look up possibly content of the story please do but it is really short um, so it, it kind of is over with <laughs> quickly you know uh, but <laughs> it's a little icky I really enjoyed it too so do with that what you will that's what I'm gonna say <laughs> I read another little kind of short uh, piece, um, I don't know, short story, kind of novelette, I don't know, by Wendy Dalrymple called Stuck in Z Middle with You. Very cute. This is a cute little romance story of this <laughs> uh, this couple in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. So something that we follow our young man who's working at a gas station and um, it's kind of like, you know, kind of late, you know, in the evening or whatever, and some stuff, something's starting to happen, you know, his kind of regular customers that come in are turning up and they're kind of getting a little violent. They look a little crazy, right? And so, yeah, we realize something is going on. There's also a young woman who was getting gas at the young station, at the gas station. And so um, she kind of gets trapped in the gas station too. So they're trying to, they're, they're inside the gas station trying to get out basically. And uh, so we follow them as this, this night goes on and, um, 
you know, the decisions that they, like, how to get out of there kind of thing and try to get out and save themselves. And meanwhile, falling in love along the way. It was really, it was really cute and, and fun and uh, good zombie stuff going on here too. Uh, yeah, uh, I really liked it. I really liked it. The second thing I read by this author, I think, and I really enjoyed, what was that? White Ibis, I think it's called. Um, I really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed this. So yeah, stuck in Z middle with you. I did get this one through, I always want to say scribd. It's not scribd anymore, ever in. <laughs> Alrighty, I did uh, finish most recently. I uh, finished Severance by Ling Ma. Very excited to finally have gotten to this book. This one has been sitting on my shelf for a couple of years. And I did overall really enjoy this one as well. Um, this is a very different sort of like zombie book, though, I will say. So, you know, <clears throat> doesn't have like zombies eating brains and stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, we're following our young, our young character, our, not young character, our main character here, who is a sort of young woman who's living in New York City. Um, you know, she's got a you know a job. You know, her daily day life of what her job is and that kind of thing. She is also this is another sort of immigrant story I tell, which I think is very um, telling about this book. Very a good, a very much a focus of this book is also a, is another sort of immigrant story, just kind of like Shanghai Girls is. Um, she was. Uh, I think she came to China or China came from China to the U.S. when she was like six or so. So she grew up most of her life in the U.S. And um, so yeah, but like I said, she's lived in New York City. And then there's this thing that's happened. This virus. It's not a virus. It's a. I think it's like a fungal thing in this one. And um, it doesn't turn people like I said into like flesh eating zombies. It it turns them into um, I don't even know how to say it. Like. Um, I mean, zombies in a way because you know they're not they're not like living their life like they used to <laughs> but it's almost like they get stuck into this like repetitive motion type of thing so like you'll see one scene though like she sees a, a woman like working in like you know a clothing store and she's just repeatedly folding and unfolding clothes like shirts making stacks of shirts and so there's just this repetition of of some of th things like that that people are doing i don't know it's really it's kind of hard to explain like i said but um but it gets to the point where you know there's not that many sort of living people left i don't know if it's kind of like a like they've got a um resistance to this bacteria this fungus or I, I don't know but um and so she she stays in New York for a really long time until she basically is like okay I gotta get out of here and then she kind of gets um teams up with this sort of group of you know kind of survivors that um and you know that kind of thing and it kind of story goes from there but really the story flashes back a lot also with her life growing up her life you know what it was at the present time a relationship that she was involved with um stuff like that it kind of go, it kind of goes backwards and forwards right to kind of before and after you know kind of the 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 this sort of zombie event right um there's again not a lot of zombie action in that in that way um, so don't expect that going here. This is really more of a character study, kind of literary type of story, um, <clears throat> which might not be everybody's, you know, jam. So, but I overall, like I said, I just really liked it. I think because I really liked this main character, and oh, what was her name again? Because I'm so yeah, Candace. Oh my gosh, and um, and I was really interested in her life and interested in what was happening with her in this we should get up with this group of survivors, um, because things get a little weird. Things get a little weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much to really talk about it because it's, it's like I said, it's really just focusing on Candace and her story. <laughs> and um, yeah, again, I really enjoyed it. Um, but I can see this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm glad I finally read it. Yes, yes, yes. Very excited about that. So I think that's all that I actually finished. Really a good reading month so far. And I'm just, again, slowly taking my time with things, just enjoying, enjoying what I'm reading for the most part. Um, I did start The Living Dead. This is by George Romero and Daniel Krause. I made it a pretty good chunk of the way in, a little bit over halfway. I've had a DNF. I just really am not, was not having a good time with this story at all. Um, it started good, you know, it started with, you know, a beginning of a zombie apocalypse. Um, you know the dead coming back to life right kind of classic romero and um and really good kind of there's this really good saying um we follow a bunch of different characters um but the character that the, the beginning scene that i really enjoyed was with this character who works at as like a um 
guy who does like autopsies for you know crime scenes and stuff and so um as you can imagine they've done this autopsy on this body and then it comes back to life so the whole scene was really good you know <laughs> um uh, but yeah so we're following yeah, there's that this guy uh, and his sort of assistant that works with him in, in this in the morgue basically there's that there's that character that we're following there's like a news person character that we're following there is this a woman who works with like the sort of government uh sort of this government branch that i don't know how to explain that tracks this sort of medical thing i don't, I don't know how to explain it <laughs> but she's the character um who else was it the news guy at a oh yeah the guys that are on this aircraft carrier um so out in the middle of the ocean and those were some cool scenes of the zombie stuff on the aircraft carrier too um oh and this young teenage girl yeah so i think that's kind of about the gist so i think there's some characters that we're following as we're seeing the beginning of the apocalypse and kind of what's happening you know as they're you know figured out what's going on basically and um i don't know i just <laughs> there's not a lot of they're not there's not always a lot of zombie action in here there's that it really is about the characters okay fine but like let me like let me like be interested in the characters because <laughs> a couple of these folks i just don't really care about and so i'm just you know i'm like losing interest in the story in their backstories and their what's going on with them now stories um I don't know. I just was losing focus with this. There are some female characters in here and I honestly I was not impressed with the way they were being written or the way like other characters were talking about them. It, it was left me feeling a little icky. Um, I don't know you guys. I This is a huge book so for me to have gotten to page 375 and just out of about 650 ish I just can't. I can't do it anymore. I'm really bummed about that, but um, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't do it. So, sadly, it's a DNF. I will be removing my zombie, you know, my zombie milkshake <laughs> bookmark and putting this into the get rid of pile. Um, I'm letting that one go. I'm bummed, like I said, but life is too short. Let's move on. <laughs> I have read a few short stories out of this Zombies um, Tales of the Walking Dead book, and um, I've enjoyed the few that I've read. I've kind of been slacking off on these. I read Rising Generation by Ramsey Campbell. That was pretty good. Um, I've read uh, Treading the Maze by Lisa Tuttle. Okay, this is a very non-traditional also zombie story that I really liked. It has a spooky vibe to it. Um, yeah, that was really good. And then uh, Patricia's Profession by Kim Newman. I read that one. Is that what I've read so far? I think so. I need to get back to reading a few more of those short stories. Of course, this, of course, works for Horror Mayhem as well, reading some short fiction. Uh, and for Horror Mayhem, I have been digging into Tar Heel Ghosts uh, for the local horror. And I've read, uh, this has been really fun. Um, I need to get back to this one too. Reading about, you know, local-ish ghost stories for my state and um yeah it's been really fun and um yeah the skull hangs high i read that one yeah, that one was good uh this one called buried alive that one was spooky that one was really good um a colonial apparition yeah there's this like ghost ship yeah so really i'm, I'm really enjoying that one and um, next, lastly, for in progress books, I started just yesterday. The audiobook Hold came in for Hollow Kingdom. I finally get into this. <laughs> this is by Carrie Jane Buxton. This is another book I've had on my shelf for so long now. We want to read it, kept putting it off. You know how we do, yada, yada, yada. Um, so I'm having such a great time with this one. This is so good. So, this is, you know, we're following the, a zombie apocalypse has happened, but we are following from the perspective of animals uh, and how they are responding to what's going on. Our main character is this crow who's been domesticated by this man. And, um, and so, you know, he's trying to, like I said, he's trying to figure out what's going on and uh, try to help the humans because he like i said he's a domesticated crow so he's really like used to living life that way and um yeah so this came out in 2019 so it's been out for a while 
and um, he's really funny. <laughs> and, and then he also, there's a dog that lives with him. So he and his dog are like, <laughs> um, you know, they kind of set out on a little adventure trying to figure out what they can do to help, you know, his, his human. And um, they meet sort of wild animals along the way that kind of help them. There's just like, so it's just this interesting like communication sort of system that the animals have. Um, and then also linked in with like trees and stuff. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm just having a really grand time with this. A grand old time. It is, it is really good. There's some definitely funny bits because he's a really kind of sarcastic, kind of smart ass like Crow. And um, again, this sort of like quest adventure type of story too. Um, yeah, some zombie stuff mixed in. I mean, it's just, I'm having a great, really good time with that. So, so yeah, that's kind of my reading so far. It feels like a lot when I talk about it all at once, but yeah, having a good month so far. Uh, what have I been watching, you ask? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I did a couple of weird movie club watch parties with Andrew for over from It Came From The Pages Patreon. I love weird movie club, and I don't know that I missed any of them, maybe one or two, but I try to catch them all because... I watch movies I never would watch otherwise. So including Asylum of Terror, which is, which was a lot of fun. Like this um, kind of slash that takes place in a um, haunted house, really fun. And, uh, and then most recently we watched Devil Rider, a <laughs> sort of like ghost cowboy, also kind of like a slasher. I don't know. It was actually really not good, but it, it's fun to watch as a group. <laughs> I watched a really short film uh, called Sweet Curse. It's a Korean movie. Actually very spooky too about this, this like demon. Uh, I don't know. That's just a short film. Maybe like 30 minutes. It was good. I binged watched the show The Eighth Sense. This is another Korean drama. I binged it. I was obsessed with the story. I loved it so much. The characters were so, so good. We're following a young man who is a freshman in college and he's from like a really kind of rural area. So he's moved to Seoul. So he's like this kind of fish out of water type of guy. And then he meets this other, you know, who's a senior he's kind of and he's just gotten out of the military his you know mandatory military service he's finishing out his senior year of school but he's got some baggage with him um some 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 loss in his in his history and um they just kind of connect and uh, they um they have this like surfing club i don't know it's like it's just so fantastic the characters were so good about you know, this you like being young and uh, sort of next steps of life um, and love and loss. And oh my God, I was obsessed. I love it so much. I think it's really kind of hopped up to one of like my favorite. Um, it's so good. Um, uh, back to like Zombiethon, I did finally watch Little Monsters. Oh my gosh, I loved this movie. <laughs> it is so, so good. So we've got this kindergarten teacher who's taking her kindergarten class to like this farm essentially for like a field trip. Meanwhile, the zombie apocalypse has happened and so they have to get themselves to safety. There are like funny bits, gross zombie bits with like blood and everything guts everywhere. And it's just, it's just so good. I had such a great time with it. Oh my God, Olivia Dan Young, um, so good, so good. What else for zombie stuff? I um, I finally got back to watching All of Us Are Dead. I watched one more episode, so I'm uh, maybe about halfway through uh, All of Us Are Dead. Um, I've not gotten back to Kingdom. I still want to get to at least watch a couple episodes of season two of Kingdom, which is a zombie series. I actually watched season one last Zombiethon. I haven't made it back to it yet. Um, I finished out Pit Babe, uh, another sort of a tie show I was watching. Uh, so I finished that series. I've started so many series right now. I don't know. I've just been in a really kind of like watching mood lately <laughs> over this past like week in particular. That's when I binged Eighth Sense and I've started like I don't know how many <laughs> shows. I've just been in a watching mood, not so much a reading mood uh, other than like listen to audiobooks at work. So <laughs> um, but I've just been enjoying my month, enjoying my month. Um, I think that's about that's about it for that um, life stuff. Um, you know, we've had our, we had our little meeting for my son's transition to middle school. <laughs> I'm not freaking out at all. I'm not at all terrified inside. I hope it'll go well. <laughs> um, 
I've got some more concert tickets. I'm going to go see NCT Dream in September. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to go find my new friend Sarah, who I actually met through this channel. And, um, you know, uh, just a reminder, I've got a little K-pop Discord. And um, we have a lot of fun over there. So, yeah, I don't know. It, uh, just concert, just concerts, concerts, concerts. I'm loving it so much. I am getting ready for the 80s concert in August. I did purchase the Lightini and um, let me show it to you. It is so pretty. So if you're not familiar with K-pop, these are light sticks. Oh, I don't have the batteries in it, but you, um, you know, you use them at the concerts. These light up and a lot of they connect with an app uh, when during the concert so that um, they sync up with like everybody else's Lightini, which is really cool. So I only own a few of these. Like they're kind of, well, well unless you use them at a, a concert, it's kind of like, why do you have one? So um, I finally wanted to have one since I know I'm going to the 80s concert and it's so pretty. And you get this really pretty like group card with everyone holding the Lightini. I love it so much. Okay, so I got that. That was really cool. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, cicadas are going wild around here. <laughs> Anyone else having like a big swarm, the big, you know, swarming of cicadas this year? <laughs> it's wild around here in, in North Carolina, where I am anyway. Yeah, it is wild. I see one flying out in my tree right now. <laughs> They're like these about pretty big bugs. I'll maybe put a picture of them here. But, um, but yeah, they're... They, they, you know, they emerge from the underground every, you know, so many years. And so this is the year. <laughs> uh, there's just like constant whir hum in the background. Anyway, um, I think that's about it. All I've been kind of watching and getting into. Um, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Let me know what you've been getting into for May so far. Because can't you believe it's like already halfway over um let's see what else am i going to talk about i think that's it so yeah let me know what you're getting into reading watching doing all that kind of good stuff i want to know thanks so much for watching i always appreciate your time i really do and um yeah i'll see you in the next one bye